In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this simple emblem style logo using Affinity Designer. Before we get started though, be sure to join my mailing list to receive over 200 free design templates, including logos, avatars, textures, infographics, and so much more. As a subscriber, you'll be the first to receive the free templates that I send out each month. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So I'm gonna open up a new document by pressing Command N, and I'm gonna size my document at 1280 by 1280 pixels and click Create. And I'm gonna come over here to my Shapes tool and I wanna grab the rounded rectangle tool and the color I'm gonna to apply to this tool or to this shape is a light shade of red. And then I'm just gonna click and drag to create an elongated shape like that where the height is greater than the width. Then I'm gonna grab my selection tool and I wanna make sure I have this centered vertic vertically and horizontally on the page. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna grab the shape tool again. Let me take this red handle right here and just bring that all the way in so that we have rounded edges. And then I'll click the convert to curves button up top here to convert that into a shape. And now I'm gonna grab the nodes tool. The nodes tool should be enabled by default after clicking convert to curves. And I'm gonna select these bottom three nodes right here and then I will just make these sharp corners. So I'll click on that. And then I'll click on just this node right here and then hold shift and click and drag it up about that far. And let me zoom in on this. I'm gonna grab the corners tool now. Let's select that. I'm gonna select these two corner nodes right here and just bring them in like this so that we have rounded corners. And then I'll select this node down here and do the same thing. I'm gonna make this a rounded corner as well. And then I will click the bake appearance button to finalize that change. So let me grab my selection tool again. I'm gonna place this back in the center of the page because now it's a little off center. And now I'm gonna create some text going along the inside of this shape. So to do that, let me select the shape and I'll come over here to the layers menu, right click it and go to duplicate. And I'm gonna grab the contour tool, which is located over here. And then I will take this handle and just click and drag it to the left and bring in the path. We're gonna create an offset of this path about that far. And then I'll click the bake appearance button and that's the path I want to place the text on. So with that path still selected, I'm gonna click on my artistic text tool right here. And then I'm gonna zoom in on this and I wanna bring the cursor right on the outer edge of that blue path. And you'll notice the cursor changes from an A to an T. Once you see that change, go ahead and click and then you should be able to put some text on that path. So I'm gonna put on my caps lock and I'm just gonna write for this demonstration, logo design tutorial. And let me press Command A to select all of the text. And I'm gonna take this green triangle right here and put this down here at the bottom left. That's gonna represent the start point of the text. And I'll take this orange triangle and put this over here at the bottom right. That's gonna be the end point of the text. And once those two objects are in place, I can click the center align button and then it puts the text directly at the top center of our shape. So now let me change the font. I'm gonna use a different font for this. The font I'll be using for this tutorial is called Phosphate. It's a free font if you wanna download it. We have two different variations here, the inline and the solid. For this portion, I'm gonna use the solid. And I'm gonna make this text bigger. Let me just choose this drop down over here and I'll go with something like, let's say 36, maybe a little bigger. Or you can even go somewhere in between, like I'll go with maybe 42. And with that set, I'm gonna place some spacing between these letters. So I'm gonna hold my Option key and press the right arrows to add some spacing between those letters. If you're using Windows, that would be your Alt key. So hold Alt and press the right key to add some spacing between those letters. And now that that's set, I'm gonna make this a dark shade of blue. I already have my color set over here, so I'm just gonna click on that. You can choose whatever color you'd like over here. I'm using this dark shade of blue. And now I'm gonna grab my selection tool Let's convert this to curves. Let's go to text, or no, layer, and go to convert to curves. So now that's no longer text, that is just a vector path. And I'm gonna select the original shape back here, and I'm going to apply a stroke to this. I want the stroke to be the same color as the text we just applied, so let me apply that color, and I'm going to increase the size of that stroke about that much. We want it to be somewhat consistent with the weight of the letters, so somewhere right about there looks pretty good. So now let me deselect that. I'm gonna grab my text tool and I'm gonna click and drag and create some text down here. I'm gonna use all caps and write affinity. 
And let me select all those letters. I'm going to change this to the inline variety of this font so it has a little more style. And I'm going to collapse those letters a little bit. Again, holding the Option key and using your left arrow to decrease the space. And then I'll place this towards the center. Let me hold the Shift key and bring that up a little bit. Bring that up there. And now I'm going to make a duplicate of this text by holding Option and clicking and dragging and then holding Shift. On Windows, that would be Alt. Grab my text tool again, and I'm just going to change this text to Designer. And let me select all of that and change this back to the solid variation of the font. I'm going to scale that down to make it a little smaller. And let me grab my text tool again. And let me hold Option and put some spacing between those letters just to stretch them out a little bit. Let me put that back in there. And now just for decoration, I'm going to put a little star down there. So I'm going to hold a click over my shape tool, look for the star tool. And for the color, I want to have no stroke and I want to have the blue fill color. And once that's in place, I can just hold command and click and drag, command and shift and click and drag. And then we get a star like that. I'm going to go back to my selection tool, scale that down a little bit. And at this point, I'm just going to adjust the spacing between these elements here. So let me turn off snapping for now. I'm going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to move this up as well. And I'm going to move this up as well. And if you end up with something like what I have here, where your shape's a little too elongated, you can just grab your nodes tool and select these bottom nodes and just click and drag them up or down while holding shift. And uh, for my example here, I got to bring them up a little bit. So I'll bring them up about this far. And there we go. Now we just have to create some kind of graphical depiction to place in the center here. Let me just adjust that a little bit. That's going to bug me if it stays like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's create a little graphical depiction to put in here. So for my example, I have some crossed pencils. So let's create that real quick. I'm going to create another new document. Again, 1280 by 1280. I press Command N to open this, uh, this menu. Click Create. And I'm going to grab my rounded rectangle tool again. I want to apply, I want to set the color at no fill and the blue stroke that we were working with before. And I'm going to make the stroke size 15. And then I will click and drag to draw an elongated rectangle like that. And I'm going to take this node and bring that in so that the caps are rounded. Now let's convert to curves. And with the node tool selected, select these three nodes down here and make those corners sharp. And then click on just this node right here and hold shift and bring that down a little bit. So that's going to be the tip of the pencil. Now let me click off of it to deselect. I'm going to grab the pen tool, which you can access over here in the tool menu. You can also press the letter, key on your, the letter P on your keyboard. And I'm going to turn on snapping. And I'm going to snap to the left edge, click to add a point. Hold shift, bring the line straight up, straight across until it clicks to the other edge and then click again. And then let's just change the weight of this to 15 to match the other shape that we drew. And now I'll make a copy of this. I'm going to hold option, click and drag and then hold shift. Bring this down to about here. And I'll just adjust the sizing a little bit or the spacing. And I'm going to make another copy of this line and bring this down here. So I'm going to hold option and click and drag while holding shift. And this one I'll just bring down here. And then we're going to have a line going through the middle here. So let me grab my pen tool again. Let me snap to the center of this object. Hold shift, bring the line straight down and snap to that bottom object. And there we go. So now let's select all of these objects and go to layer, geometry and choose merge curves. And at this point, you can adjust the size of the object by grabbing your nodes tool and selecting these nodes down here and bringing this up and down as needed. So for my drawing, I it was already at a pretty good height. So I'm going to leave mine right about there. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit. I'm going to hold shift and click and drag to scale that down. And now we're going to create a duplicate of this. So let's come over here to the layers menu, right click, go to duplicate. And then I'll hold my shift key. Well, I'm going to click and drag and then hold shift and rotate this around like that so that we now have two copies of this that are, that are crossed. And now we have to punch out this negative space over here where they cross over. So to do that, I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool and draw a rectangle going over this section right here. 
And I'm gonna hold shift and click on that horizontal pencil and I just wanna make sure I have that centered vertically and horizontally. And now with those two objects selected, I'm gonna grab my Shape Builder tool. I'll click on the Subtract option to enable that. And then I wanna click directly on these strokes right here where it intersects with the other object. And make sure you click exactly on that path and not like somewhere in the, in the space between them because if you click on the space between, you're gonna get a totally different result, which you don't want. So now we can just take this shape and get rid of it. We could take both of these objects, rotate them around, hold shift while doing so, so that they're upright like that. And now we can merge these together by going to layer and choosing geometry, merge curves. And we can right click this and go to copy and then paste this into our logo design. So I'm just gonna press command V to paste this in there. And I'm just gonna hold command and shift and scale that down. And you may have to adjust the stroke size depending on how big or small you designed it at. So I'm gonna bring that down about that far. And I'll maybe make this a little bigger and maybe make this outer stroke a little smaller so it looks a little more consistent with the weight of the pencils. And then I'm gonna put some EST text in here. It says establish 2025. So let me grab the text tool, click and drag, and I'm gonna write EST. Let me collapse some of the spacing between those letters. And I'm gonna make that a little smaller. Put that right there. Let me turn off snapping. And I'm gonna make another copy of this and put this over here. Grab my text tool and just write 2025. And the final step would be to place a white outline with a drop shadow going behind it. So to do that, let me select the shape in the background here. And I'm gonna come over here to the quick effects menu and I'm gonna choose outline and I'm gonna bring the radius out like that. And then I'll click on this black stripe and change this to white so it's a white outline. And maybe I'll make that a little smaller. And then I'll come down here and choose outer shadow. And I want to bring, I want to bring the opacity all the way up. And then I want to bring the radius all the way up as well. And then you can adjust the opacity as needed. So I'm going to bring it down about that far. I'm actually going to make the drop shadow the same shade of blue that I was working with for the other objects. And I think that looks a lot better. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.